Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to stitch together panoramas using Lightroom's Photo Merge feature. After I show you how to create panoramas, I'll show you how to find your panorama files, and I'll give you some tips for photographing panoramas successfully. Now Photo Merge will stitch RAW files and JPEGs, as well as TIFFs and PSDs. One thing I love about this feature, however, is that because it works with raw data, if your source files are raw files, your panorama file will be just as much of a raw file, with all of the editing advantages of raw files. This sets Lightroom's Photo Merge feature apart from those of Photoshop, Photomatix, and others. Before we start, notice that the resulting file name is the file name of one of my source files, DSC2835, then dash pano.dng. Many of you know that generally DNG files are RAW files. However, if you create a panorama by stitching together JPEGs, even though the panorama file will be a DNG file, you don't gain the additional benefits of RAW files, such as better highlight recovery and more editing headroom. You'll only have this if your panorama frames start out as RAW files. Let me go back to grid view with a shortcut G. To get started, I'll select my first photo, then I'll hold the shift key down while I click on my last photo to select them all. The brightest photo in my selection is the active photo. It's the file name of the active photo that we see as the beginning of the panorama file. To choose a different active photo, click inside its thumbnail, not in the gray border. I'll click back on this first one. Now generally my workflow is to create the panorama, then develop the result. However, if you've already done some editing work, Lightroom will automatically copy some of that work from the active photo to the result. Settings that are copied include basically all the global slider settings. What's not included are local corrections, red eye, spot healing, upright, crop, and lens corrections, with the exception of defringe. With this in mind, it can be more straightforward to do all your work afterwards, but for global settings, it's really fine either way. To launch Photo Merge, you can go up to Photo, Photo Merge, and then Panorama, or you can right click inside any of the thumbnails and choose Photo Merge Panorama, or you can use the shortcut Control M. Note that this is Control M even on Max. We see it creating the preview here. I'm going to pause the video while this finishes. Now Lightroom has three different methods here of aligning and distorting the photos to seamlessly fit them together. I'll explain them briefly, but really it comes down to whichever choice gives you the result that you like best. Now I'm going to uncheck Auto Crop while I talk about these. I'll start with Perspective. If you have a center subject in your scene, and the scene is relatively flat, like a building, if you take a moment to think of yourself out in the field photographing, as you capture the side frames in your scene, your camera is at an angle to your subject. Perspective corrects the side photos for this perspective issue. It does give you this bow tie effect, however, so more of your panorama has to be cropped off. Note that in this example, the right side is taller than the left because Lightroom is also leveling or straightening the photo. If you don't have a center subject, as I don't in this scene, or your scene wraps around you or is really wide, cylindrical can be a better option since it doesn't make the perspective correction and you don't have to crop off as much of your photos. Finally, spherical maps the photos into a sphere and can be best for 360 degree panoramas. It doesn't make much of a difference in this case. As I said at the beginning, I'd recommend that you just try each one and see which one you like best. Next, you could have Lightroom crop your photo at this point, or you can wait till you get into the develop module. If you do auto crop, you can always undo or modify it later in the develop module using the crop tool. Now, if your exposures differed, Lightroom may apply some exposure blending across the frames. It will also fix chromatic aberration, which is a lens issue, 
even if you don't check the box in the Lens Corrections panel of the Develop module, because it's important that that be fixed on individual frames. For the same reason, it will also apply a lens profile to each of the frames if it can find a profile. I talk about these in depth in my video on lens corrections, but profiles correct for any pincushion or barrel distortion your lens creates, as well as vignetting or darkening of the corners. In a minute, I'll show you an example of where it can't find a profile. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you'll have this feature called Boundary Warp. To see what's going on with it, I'll uncheck Auto Crop. Boundary Warp will warp the panorama to fill the canvas, preserving image content near the boundaries that would otherwise be lost due to cropping. If you use 100 on Boundary Warp, then Auto Crop is not applicable since you don't need to crop anything off. Because it'll warp the panorama, it's usually not appropriate to use it with perspective, since often with perspective, you're trying to preserve straight lines. Boundary Warp would then warp those straight lines. As you watch the rest of this video, you won't see this Boundary Warp slider, since I've cut in to introduce this, but you could use it in any of the examples I present in this video. I'll go ahead and complete the merge. As we see up in the status bar, Lightroom is processing this in the background, so we can go ahead and do other work while it continues. You could even build more panoramas, but if you build too many at once, Lightroom may run out of memory and crash. Here's the result. Notice that the file name draws from the active source file. Then we have dash pano dash four dot DNG. It had to add a number, in this case four, because we already had dash pano, and I've already done this a couple more times, and elsewhere in my library, I've got the dash two and dash three. Now, other than the file name of the active source file, Lightroom doesn't document that the panorama came from these specific source files. If this is important to you, then I would select your panorama file, and in the metadata panel, I would document all six source files. I like to use the copy name field. You could also stack the panorama file with all the source files. I cover stacking in my evaluating photos video and my HDR merge video. Let's do another panorama so I can show you a couple more details. Now this isn't the most attractive scene, but it'll do for my example. First, I'm not sure if these photos are in the correct order. It doesn't matter though because Lightroom will analyze the photos and place them in the proper order. I'll go ahead and click on the first, hold the Shift key down as I click on the last to select them all, and then I'll right click in one of my thumbnails and choose Photo Merge Panorama. And I'll wait for the preview to complete. Okay, so I wanted to bring this warning message to your attention in case it happens to you. With the last set of photos I did, Lightroom found the lens profile for the lens I shot those photos with. In this case, it can't find the profile for the lens. When I see this message, the solution is to cancel out and go see if a profile is available, and if so, apply it. With these photos still selected, I'll go to the Develop module, and I'll scroll down to the Lens Corrections panel. Now I want to apply a profile to all of these photos. So to do this, next to Sync, I'm going to hit this little switch to move to Auto Sync. This allows me to work on multiple photos at once. You can watch my video on Sync and Auto Sync or working on groups of photos for more on this functionality. Next, here in the Profile tab, I'll enable Profile Corrections. But I didn't see anything happen in the photo there because, in fact, Lightroom can't find the lens profile, which we already knew. So I need to nudge it in this situation. I'm going to click on Make here and choose Canon to give it a hint. And once I tell it that, it in fact finds the specific lens I used for these photos. And if you look at the photo, if I turn the check mark off and then on again, you see a change. Now, if you can't find a profile for your lens, you'll just run panorama without it. Note that if you have a compact camera, 
or a mirrorless camera, those profiles are automatically applied behind the scenes, so you shouldn't see any warning messages in the panorama dialog. Now that I've applied the profile, I'll turn off Auto Sync and I'll build my panorama. From here in the Develop module, I can right click, choose Photo Merge, Panorama. I'll pause the video while the preview completes, and then I'll go ahead and complete the merge, and then I'll go back to the Library module. To create another panorama with the same settings I used in this last one, I can actually bypass the dialog. I'll select just a couple photos here and use the shortcut shift Control m You can see that it's automatically creating the panorama without showing me the dialog. And here's the result. This is called headless mode. Now let's talk about finding all your panorama files. At this point, the only way to identify panorama files is the dash pano in the file name. So if you want to be able to find them, it's important not to remove that from the file name. To do a search for your panorama files, you would first choose a source. Where do you want to search? Your entire catalog, a particular folder, or a collection? I'll just search in the collection I'm already in. Next, up in the library filter bar, I'll click on text to do a text search, and I'll type in dash pano and I see my panorama files in this collection. I talk about the library filter bar in depth in my video on searching for photos. To cancel this search, I should see a little X to the right here, but there's a glitch with my screen display, so I'll just delete the dash panel and click on None. Finally, for those new to photographing panoramas, I want to give you a few tips so that yours blend together as well as this one does. First, if you can use a tripod, do. This guarantees that you'll get the best alignment, though Photo Merge often does a good job with handheld images as well. Next, it's important for the frames to have overlapping content. Adobe recommends 30 to 40 percent. In addition, use manual focus rather than autofocus so that what you're focusing on doesn't shift between frames. Similarly, Keep your depth of field or aperture constant, as well as your exposure if possible. Now, as I mentioned, Lightroom will do some exposure blending across the source files if necessary, but it's often better if it doesn't have to. Shoot in manual exposure mode if you can, or use aperture priority. Finally, if you're shooting JPEG so that your white balance doesn't shift between shots, don't use auto white balance mode. Choose daylight or cloudy or something appropriate for the scene. This doesn't matter if you're shooting raw because white balance isn't baked into your photos. Therefore, Lightroom can apply a consistent white balance across the panorama file. Now, I would encourage you to experiment not only with horizontal panoramas, but vertical ones as well as panoramas that are both wide and tall, just to give you more pixels if you want to print really big and of course 360 degree panoramas as well. In the next video, I'll talk about the Photo Merge HDR feature, which allows you to combine multiple exposures for scenes that have very bright highlights and very dark shadows. You can combine the two features by shooting multiple exposures for each frame in your panorama. In this case, I would recommend doing the HDR merge of the individual source frames before creating your panorama. This concludes the video on creating panoramas using Photo Merge Panorama.